Hey folks, Ray at DCAmerica.com here, and Tammy gave a bit of a walkthrough first ride, well it's actually like my third ride, but 10th first ride of this inside ride kicker platform. Uh, I think it could be called like the floater, uh, so with, without the E because because Wahoo. Now it's not made by Wahoo, it's made by the company Inside Ride, the same company that makes the Inside Ride uh, rollers and floating fork stand. And this is kind of a variant of the floating fork stand that I've talked about in the past up there. They also make the full on roller system and everything else. But this is an accessory for another company. So in this case, you have to have a Wahoo kicker, this doohickey down there. Uh, it will not work with the kicker core or the Tax Neo or anything else except just the kicker. Uh, and the reason for that is the way it connects to the legs down there. Uh, and so there's essentially two parts to the system. There is the floating fork up here, and then there is the floating rear back there. Uh, and that's what you put your kicker on, and you lock it in place on the center beam there that balances uh, basically there's two little kind of wedges on either side of the legs, and it keeps the whole thing nice and locked in there. The entire setup process is at best like five to seven minutes, like at worst, or have you want to describe that, it doesn't take very long at all. Super quick and easy. And then on the front side here, your bike simply locks into this fork uh, mount, so very similar to what you'd have on a bike. So I can go and unlock this right there. Come on, unlock this right there. There we go. Uh, and you're gonna see it simply pops down in place and go ahead and hook it back in. Okay, a quick interruption. If you're finding this video interesting or useful or any of those things, just whack that like button right now. It does really help out the channel and the video quite a bit. And I'll leave a little surprise at the end, something from uh, above that uh, you'll just, uh, let's get back to the video for now. Now the entire unit rotates on a couple different axes. Uh, first on the floating fork stand, you can go forward and back. So you can see that right there. Uh, and then you also see that the handlebars can rotate like this. Uh, and what that does, that drives the entire rotation of your body. So if you imagine you're going down the road, you know, you're going to be kind of doing a little bit of this as you're going down. That's normal. It's how the bike moves and stays upright. So this allows you to get that rotational movement that in turn drives some of that rear uh, rotational movement as well. Meanwhile, on the back, you have it back and forth. So front and back, you could say. Uh, and then you'll notice as you rotate this in the front, this entire back portion is actually leaning. Uh, now, of course, right now, there's not a lot of weight on it. So if I do that too much, you'll see it tips the front there. So you're actually going ahead and tilting the back via front rotation. Exact same concept on the inside rollers with the floating fork stand. Uh, I'm gonna jump on this and show you how this all works. Again, this is like now my third ride. So got a pretty good feel for it. Uh, I'm gonna show you just kind of simple riding first and then we'll do a couple sprints. Uh, keep in mind, the main reason that you would want something like this uh, is the fact that you're getting a little bit of that tiny bit of shifting movement. So if you're on the trainer for a number of hours at a time, uh, that little bit of movement goes ahead and it makes it so it feels just a lot more natural. I don't tend to subscribe to the idea of the feel of this being for sprints. I know like everyone, including myself, will demonstrate what a sprint looks like, uh, but the benefit of this and what it, it's nice is just that subtle movement as you're kind of moving along. And that's something that's certainly true on Zwift. I just finished up a ride and just that very nice little bit of movement uh, as you're moving forward and back, as you accelerate a little bit, uh, that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, so so a couple things on getting on the bike. Uh, there is a lock up here. So if I go ahead and lock this like this, you'll see it doesn't rotate anymore. It doesn't rotate, you know, like it did a minute ago anyways. And by locking the front, I can get on a little more easily than if I didn't have it locked. Uh, so just to show you that right there, you're still gonna wanna put a bit more weight on this opposite side here because it's definitely a little bit more tipsy than it would be otherwise. Uh, but that at least gets the on there. I can tell you that if you try to do it unlocked, so you can do it, I've done it unlocked. The trick here is to go ahead and actually use your opposite stand. So a bit of it like a Dutch uh, opening up of a car door. And then this will help you to keep it so that you don't tip over. Uh, though you still might tip over. Uh, so it's not perfect. It's usually a little easier to do if you're not talking to the camera and trying to focus over there instead of focusing on the bike. Uh, so I'll make sure this is all the way unlocked here. There we go, got this thing. Looks like it's straight to me. Sound wise, it's just a kicker. There's no change there. There's nothing that's, that's different on that at all. Uh, so the kicker that you know and love. And again, the kicker controlling everything up there. So you see right now, there's a little bit of movement. So as my handlebars just look real careful there, you see I'm just pedaling along like normal. And there's that little bit of front and back, which is in turn causing my hips to kind of rotate slightly as well. Uh, it all feels just natural. Like there's nothing weird about it. Let me just shift down here in this gear. Nothing feels weird. It just feels normal to me. There's a little bit of movement. If I go ahead and accelerate a little bit, it's so not a sprint, just a little bit of acceleration there. You see the little bit of front and back on that initial acceleration, just like you sort of feel on a real bike. It does pull back, so you wouldn't feel that on a normal bike, uh, but it does, uh, does feel pretty darn close to it. So just looking here uh, from the back, you'll see just a little more 
kind of you know swaying than you would otherwise expect or see on a stationary bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw down a little bit of a sprint here, get into the right gear. And for me, I'm trying to sprint just like normal. So I'm just trying to pretend like I'm outside. I'm not overthinking it, which can be a bit of a challenge on this sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna throw a little bit more sprint into it now. And you may notice I did bunny hop the front a little bit. And that's something that I've talked to them about. And they're gonna go ahead and adjust or change the uh, cables, if you will, down there out to give it a little more movement, which in turn should get rid of that kind of bunny hop look when you go ahead and you uh, sprint pretty hard. Now, for the most part, it's been working out pretty well for me. It is a prototype, so there's some little tweaks they wanna make before they ship it out. It's all mechanical, so there's no electronics in it at all. It's kind of nice. Uh, my only kind of recommendation to them is that it make it a little more stable. So to sort of demonstrate that, if you're on a phone, unlike on a roller or something like that, you can go side to side. You're not likely to fall off, but if you're not paying attention, you're just kind of like this, eventually you will fall over. Like if you lean far enough, you can fall over. Oh, not that way. Um, and that would sort of suck. So looking at some options there at the base, and I get it, if you're on rollers, that's a real problem, but you bought a kicker to not be on rollers, so you shouldn't fall over. Uh, and that's something they could fix at the base that doesn't impact the movement, just impacts how stable it is beyond certain points. Okay, so there you go, just a quick look at things. Uh, I think for the price, this is pretty compelling. This is pretty interesting to me. Uh, a lot of the other platforms out there, you won't get as many accesses of motion uh, on them. So for example, you won't get the separation between the front handlebars uh, and that tilting side to side like you would on some of the different uh, platforms out there. Some of them are three times as much as the cost, uh, which is certainly a factor. On the flip side, this only works with the kicker right now. Uh, the company says they'll look at other trainers depending on how popular it is, but for now, you know, it's designed for just this one trainer because of the tolerances and how different trainers are made and making sure that it matches and fits exactly this trainer. Okay, so there you go. Feel free to check out my post down at the bottom there. Hit subscribe or the like button if you found it interesting. There's plenty more sports technology to come. Have a good one. Really? Again?